Good morning. I'm Eric Walsikowski, the CEO of Bespoke Partners and host of Tailored Talent. I'm joined here today by my partner, Tess Fisher, who leads our go-to-market practice. When private equity firms and software companies have the toughest go-to-market searches, they call Tess Fisher. She has uh, solved a number of tough searches for them this year. Tess, welcome to the show. Thank you, Eric. Well, look, 2023 was an amazing year for Bespoke Partners, a challenging year in the market, I think, as private equity firms were looking for exits in their portfolio companies. I think we've heard from a number of our clients that they are now holding more companies than they ever had. And so one of the things I want to do is talk about 2024 and the agenda for 2024 and what your outlook is for go-to-market leaders. I think there's still a lot of question marks around what will the new year bring from a macro economic standpoint. And so what we're hearing a lot in go-to-market as we look for leaders is that profitable growth is still the main buzzword and really the most in-demand skill set in go-to-market. In the past, we saw an investment in acquiring customers at a cost that exceeds their short-term revenue contribution. And this has changed over the course of this year and really as we look to next year to find those leaders that are spending smarter and doing it in a way that'll lead to capital efficient growth. Really for most software companies in today's market, we're hearing that there's more than one way to win with different go-to-market motions. And therefore we're seeing diversified approaches. The other thing that is always top of mind in our go-to-market searches is turnover, right? How do we find someone that's going to stay in a seat? We know that the average tenure for a go-to-market executive is about 18 months. And so our clients are asking, how do we find and hire those candidates that have longer stints and that can commit to us for a longer amount of time? And the good news is that we saw it is critical to to sussing that out because that that candidly is one of the challenges in in any kind of placement you make. Yeah, but it's easy to dismiss a candidate just based on their resume. And so we do a lot of back channeling to really understand the stories. And if the candidate tells us that they exited because of the sale, why weren't they the go forward plan? We talk to their CEO, we talk to the investors, we really look to corroborate the stories that we're hearing and ensure that the moves in their background make sense and then really push them on their plan for the new role. And we do that in strategic working sessions in the final stages of our interview process that really help the CEO hiring the go-to-market executive understand how this person is thinking for the long term and not just looking to get a quick win. No, it makes a lot of sense. And I think one of the things you honed in on was this notion of profitable growth. and, And that's really important in the qualities of the leaders we're seeing. What other attributes are you seeing in terms of leaders that are in demand now, either attributes of the candidate or or even specific roles? It's interesting because we're seeing expansion in the actual roles and go-to-market. So we, for revenue experts, growing margins is always key, but now they're really looking for those revenue leaders that can identify new sales channels. Partnerships are starting to come back. I heard one client say partnerships are kind of the sleeping lion in terms of where the biggest deal why and really a key lever for revenue when net new is down. Similarly on marketing, you know, demand gen is and was always king in software, but now we're looking for, okay, we also want someone that knows brand, someone that can really help in a rebranding. Maybe it'll open new doors with new audiences. Those that have an analytical eye in the market segment, we're seeing just piling on of attributes to really hire leaders that for sales are not just going to be an amazing salesperson anymore. They have all of the other tools in their belt as well. No, it makes a lot of sense. When you look at kind of the slowdown in exits, what are you seeing the effect that that has on compensation? Yeah, yeah. compensation, surprisingly, and we've talked about this last time, it, it hasn't come down from that boom that we saw. You know, our data shows that CRO compensation surpassed CEO compensation in the boom in 2021. What we're seeing in go-to-market specifically is that there's a lot of emphasis on cash. Yes, equity is important, but it's not as guaranteed. It's never guaranteed, but there's less optimism in a new opportunity and pulling someone away from where they are today to really sell them on the upside. So for sales leaders specifically, all in OTE is around the 500 mark. Of course, it's dependent on the size of the the size of revenue of the company. Projected value of equity packages for go-to-market leaders is running at about 11.1x multiple of OTE. And we're still seeing a very competitive candidate-driven market. The volume of go-to-market searches in our practice is still high, and candidates have more than one opportunity. I don't remember the last time that we weren't in a competitive situation on an offer. And so we're working with our clients a lot on how to stretch specifically in the cash realm so that we show up with competitive packages and we can really land the talent that they want and that they need. No, absolutely. And I'm so glad you pointed that out because I think we're seeing that across our portfolio right now that given the uncertain times in the market, people are not only comparing what they're being called on in opportunities, but they're comparing against their current situation because sometimes it's better to stick with the devil than what you don't know. 
And I, and I think I remember we saw a deal where a CRO was guaranteed over a million dollars in cash comp to pull them out of their, their current situation. And so it's certainly heady times in terms of compensation for go-to-market executives, at least the, the ones we're dealing with who are the, the cream of the crop. As you think about kind of your functional area, anything unique about your area compared to others? Yeah, we're still seeing a lot of focus on a step-up candidate. So about 50% of our go-to-market placements are coming from step-up candidates. And our data has proven that they're just as successful statistically, right? We've looked back at exits and multiples and, and really understanding, and it's it's great to see. So we're consistently bringing step-up candidates that have a lot of energy and excitement to jump into the role. You know, I was going to say, Tess, that's an important point you make about step-up candidates. And I, I know a, a number of people are actually shocked that you have just as just as much chance of a step-up candidate achieving your exit as you do a proven executive. Yeah. And again, if you think back to our process, the focus on back channeling on behavioral assessments, we don't just assume that people can jump in and, and do the job and rise to the occasion, but we're going to assess it and we're going to assess it in multiple different ways to really ensure that we feel comfortable putting that step up into the role. So Tess, one of the things that I've spent the last two months doing is spending a significant amount of time with our private equity clients to talk about strategies, where they're headed into 2024. And one of the things we did a look back on 2023, and one of the things with our clients is 63% of our clients are in Europe doing investing in Europe. And with that, one of the key themes in Europe, because if we think about a scaled software company, it's typically 50% international, 50% US. One of the key go to value creation levers that they're looking at is uh, I buy a, a software company in Europe and come to the US. Can you talk to me a little bit about any trends you're seeing in activity around that? Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up because it's an increasing trend as software companies and, and our clients think about growth levers into next year and in today's economic environment. International expansion keeps coming up. And so one of the very kind of immediate and, and obvious hires for international expansion is a head of sales in North America. So we've seen this from our clients in the UK, Germany, Australia even. And they come to us and they say, this is a builder role. We don't have much of anything. All of our sales coming out of the U.S. Are, are just inbound. And so it's a really exciting opportunity to share in the market with sales leaders because you have the base of this company that's done well, has some great logos, but they really want you to come in and build the structure, build out the team. They're almost like president or GM type roles. And so it's been really fun to work with candidates and share these opportunities around international expansion. Absolutely. I mean, definitely a big thing we picked up in 2023 and in talking to our clients. They're not slowing down their European or international investment with that strategy. So it's going to be exciting to see that play out. But you as an expert there, excited about your ability to play a role in, in shaping the future of some of these folks' uh, strategy here in the U.S. The other thing that I'm seeing with 2024 is even though there's uncertain times in the market, given this portfolio company bloat or the idea that PE firms have had more portfolio companies than they've ever had, our clients are actually starting to plan for exits in 2024. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think it's important to do as you start to plan for an exit is assess your current leadership team to see if there are any holes or risk factors in there. Can you talk to me a little bit about how that might relate to the go-to-market role? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're hearing from a lot of our clients, especially on the deal side, the increased pressure to exit next year and, and what that might look like. So, you know, I'd say as you head into these uncertain times into 2024, really evaluating the leadership team. But for go-to-market sales, marketing, customer success, ensuring that you really have conviction in them to not only execute on 2024, but the next phase of the value creation plan. We've seen exit strategies change. And so that oftentimes triggers a need for a new CRO or a CMO that may have IPO experience, for example. So just really ensuring that you're evaluating the team that you're looking, whether it's an acquisition, whether it's an exit strategy. If you've considered either of these paths and you may not have the right team in place to really execute and expand on the vision, then probably a good time for you and I to have a conversation. Absolutely. No, and, and Tess, I appreciate you joining us here on Tailored Talent. Very excited about uh, the plans we have for 2024. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate you making the time.